being back in town here has really been a wonderful experience. And while some things never change, some things change a great deal. Growing up on the Upper West Side of Eau Claire, on top of Mohold Hill, by uh, just up from Cassidy's Superstore, whenever I went to school, when I drove to school at North, I had to drive down, 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 all the way to Madison Street, you know, past the old Chicken Hut, and around and down, uh, and, and then up Madison Street Hill, which you never knew if you were going to make it or not, especially if the train decided to start coming. You remember those days? Yeah? Especially when there was snow? People would get stuck there. And then, of course, on Birch Street and around the Star, and then we get to Mercury, and, and we get there. The thing that amazes me is now they've got the North Crossing. Hop, skip, and a jump, and you're there. But, you know, the, the, the planning that went through the North Crossing had to be something incredible. And I'm not just talking about over the, over the river. I'm talking about as you, as you go out towards 53, all of, those, all of those hills of limestone that were perfectly cut, going out to 53 and heading north, or no, yeah, north, um, all those hills of limestone that were perfectly cut and cut through. And so when I was doing my exegetical study for John a couple of weeks ago, and we talked about this, uh, prepare ye you know, the highway, I couldn't help but think about the North Crossing and how it had to be prepared for. It could not just be, oh, you know what, we're going to stick some dynamite here, and it blows up. That's not how it works, does it? There's planning. There's, you have to do things just so and so Isaiah's text, in, in Isaiah 40, the voice of one who calls out, prepare the way of the Lord in the wilderness, make a level highway in the desert of our, for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the uneven shall be made level, and the rough places plain. Isaiah describes the coming of of God as tearing down the mountains and filling in the valleys. And these images symbolize a, a major road work, a major road work that's, that's been done or that will be done for the coming of our Lord. And so I want to use this image to help us on this last leg to get to Christmas Eve. I would like us to go on a trip Imagine if you want, we're going to get into the, the uh, Griswold family truckster. All right, we're going to go on a ride together. And I want to imagine ourselves traveling down the Christmas highway. Traffic is building up on that Christmas highway. We see in front of us a line of vehicles racing to and from the retail shops and getting just the right purchases for every purpose person on the Christmas list. How many of you have your Christmas shopping not done? See? And we're listening to the holly jolly music on the Christmas uh, radio. Frequently intermixed with advertisements for our last-minute gifts and, and the, the things that we simply must purchase. It's interesting because if you go back and look at commercials from the late 70s and the 80s, man, they pumped that stuff right before Christmas. You had to go get it. And if you go back and look at the must-have gifts from every Christmas, it's really kind of interesting to watch and see what people had to have. And on top of our lungs, we're singing, it's the most wonderful time of the year. It's the hap happiest time of the year. And so we're going down the road. We are well on our way to a Merry Christmas, just like everybody else. Every time we walk into a retail store, we see Santa's elves. On the radio and television, we hear the cheery advertisements steering us down the great highway to a secular holiday. Isn't this the real Christmas anyway? Isn't it about those warm, fuzzy things and those happiness? Isn't it about family get-togethers and exchanging gifts and all those kind of things? But wait. We're on the Christmas highway. 
we look ahead and we see something that's a little bit different. We see at the crest of a hill a sign, a huge arrow pointing off to the right. And as we get closer, we can see the sign. It says, detour one mile. So our foot backs off the accelerator a little bit. And we see another sign. All Christians take Advent detour one half mile ahead. And when we get closer to the detour, we see a very old man stopping every car to explain the problem. And when it's our turn, we roll down the window and we notice that the old man's name tag says Isaiah. He's very polite and he explains to us that, well, folks, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you can't get to the Christ child this way. You have to take the detour. All those folks going down the superhighway may find a happy holiday, but it'll be an empty one. You just can't have the Christ reborn in your life unless you take this detour. Isaiah goes on to say, you see, we've got some major road work ahead. There are mountains to be torn down and valleys to be filled in before anyone can find the true meaning of Christmas. There's a cut through to be built through all of this stuff. Now, he says, as you drive along, be careful to watch for signs or you'll get lost for sure. And in that case, you'll never get to the real Christmas. So we turn off the superhighway and we begin to bounce along on the construction road. Before long, we come to the first sign, the one that Isaiah told us about. It says, comfort, comfort my people. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 2. Comfort. It's kind of an interesting message. And you know, it seems that most churches these days have forgotten that comfort message. Instead, they're busy being comfortable and forgetting those who are in need of comfort. Jesus was very critical of the Pharisees who seemed to add the burden of religion to people who are burdened enough already. Matthew 25, verse 15 tells us that at one point, Jesus says to them, you are making people twice as fit for hell as you are yourselves. But Jesus' way was different. He was the friend of the sinner. He once said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden light can think of a lot of people who could stand that message of comfort right now. And you know, sometimes we have to stop and say, I think I'm going to speak tenderly to more folks this Christmas. I think I can find somebody to say something encouraging, an encouraging word to them this Christmas. Maybe that's the right way to Christmas. Oops, there's a second sign on the head. Isaiah says to pay special attention to those signs or we would never make it to the right place. What does this one say? It says, call out to her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received of Yahweh's hand double for her sins. That's a really long sign. So if I were to make that sign up into one word, it would be forgiveness. That reminds me of when John the Baptist came in and talked about forgiveness. He had the same idea about preparing for the coming of the Messiah. When he showed up in the wilderness eating locust and eating honey, he talked about forgiveness. Mark chapter 1 verse 4 says, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching the baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins takes me to Psalm 51, which is David's confession to God. He says what I would like to say sometimes. Have mercy on me, God, according to your loving kindness, according to the multitude of your tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions, for I know my transgressions. My sin is constantly before me. Isaiah's sign says the penalty is paid. The term has been served. 
And you know of all the gifts that we unwrap this year, maybe that's the best gift we could ever receive. The assurance that our sins, yours and mine, are forgiven. The Bible says that Jesus died for our sins, and that's why he came into the world in the first place at Christmas, so that we could be set free from our sin. David's psalm exactly describes what Christ came to do. Psalm 51, verse 10 to 12 says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Do not throw me from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Uphold me with your willing spirit. You know, sometimes my life will seem kind of like a mist. It's here and then it's gone, different parts of it. What, am I, what do I mean? Think about this. Do you, how many of you really remember what you got for Christmas three years ago? How many remember what you got for Christmas two years ago? How about last year? Do you remember what you got for Christmas last year? My daughter's shaking her head, yes. Good, because I don't remember what I gave you. <laughs> so many times the gifts come and they go. For so many people, the, the uh, image of Christmas Eve is not the presents we get, but it's the amount of wrapping paper that's in the middle of the living room from all the cr gifts we get. Maybe that's a symbol. Maybe that wrapping paper is a symbol of the fleeting nature of the things of life. Do we really need to keep things? No. We have to keep things in perspective. Because things fade, and things wither, and things break. Maybe the real Christmas is about helping us to get over our natural preoccupation with ourselves and to do something for others. Okay, here comes that final sign. I see the main road again now, and we must be almost there. Almost there after this bumpy construction. It's really good to finally arrive at our destination. And what does this sign say? It says this. Isaiah chapter 40. Behold your God. Behold, the Lord Yahweh will come as a mighty one, and his arm will rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom, and will be gentle with, will gently lead those who have their young. Finally. Finally, when we have the way prepared, when the mountains are brought low, the valleys are filled in, then and only then are we ready for the coming of our Lord. Only after the long detour do we get the sign says, Behold your God. Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. Behold, the virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. There you have it. After all the preparation, we come to the end of the Christmas highway, and we find God. We find God, the babe, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. And so, as we bridge over, I will see you Tuesday night as we all come to the manger, coming to let us adore him. May God bless that and, and bless our hearts and keep us to meditate on this until we come again. Amen.